you, Lord. We receive your word this morning. We receive eyes that see, ears that hear, and our hearts are open. The name of Jesus is glorified. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name. Listen down. Let me teach you. Romans chapter number 5, the Romans of redemption. Romans 5, the Romans of redemption. Glory to God. Romans 5, the Romans of redemption. I've done verse 1 to 12, but I'll begin from verse 12 again today. The reason being that uh, the lack of understanding of uh, what Jesus had wrought for us in his death, burial, and resurrection is famously the reason why believers are acting like unbelievers and then believers are addressing believers as though they are unbelievers. If you understand what Jesus had wrought for you forever, you will not be that believer that can be tossed about by every wind of doctrine. And the best place to realize, to understand, and to see what Jesus had done for you is in the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there are scriptures in the book of Romans. I'm sure religion will just want it out of there. And I give you an example of such scriptures. Give me Romans 8 and verse 34. Romans 8 verse 34. The MSG translation. I'm sure religion will just want such scriptures to be out of the Bible. But it's there. You know, when I say religion, I just mean people that feel that, that uh, God can just... Uh, uh, Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 34. Message translation. Okay, go back to 33. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, um, okay, let's read from here and go. And who will dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Chosen here does not mean people that are ten chosen. Chosen here means everyone that is in Christ. That's why the book of Peter said, you are a choosing generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a holy nation. Glory to the name of Jesus. Is the way you tilted it, Omale. Now go to verse 34. Uh, 34. It said, uh, who dare even point a finger? The one who died for us, that means the one who died for us will not. Who was raised to life for us, he was raised to life for us and is in the presence of God at this very moment, present day ministry of Jesus Christ. What is he doing? He's sticking out for us. Now I'm going to verse number 25. <laughs> Can we read it together one to go? Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's law for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, shall be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us. And you see, all of those things the Bible mentioned there, it means you might go through them, but they cannot drive a wedge between. A wedge is a, is, is a galvanized machine that is used to force something open. For instance, if there is a very bad car wreck accident, they use a wedge, they put it in the door or somewhere they want to remove the people that are in the car. The moment they, 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 they put it on, it just open the, the dented, folded car. So it said, not nobody will be able to drive a wedge. That is, you can't separate us. It means we might go through troubles, but troubles should not. We might go through hard times, but hard times should not, cannot. We might be hated, but it cannot. If you doubt it, tell me. I've been in this country for about 40 years. I've seen all manner of things. I'm born and brought up in this state, and I've survived. We have seen the methods in it. Some of you, it's just a name you heard. There is nothing new. But do you notice that with everyone, the church becomes stronger and better. They born a dilapidating church, we raise a better structure. They raise a better structure. They born it, we raise a state-of-the-art structure. 
upon the state of the earth structure, we now build a skyscraper so that when they are coming, you release it from the sky on them. <laughs> and what will happen when you go to heaven? You're already in heaven. Not hunger. It means you might be hungry, but hunger cannot. Not homelessness. You know, when you burn your house, you are homeless forever. <laughs> Not bullying threats. <laughs> Not backstabbing. The, the, the bad thing about backstabbing is inside and outside. Inside us backstab you, outside us backstab you. If it is only outside us, it's understandable. You know, the, the, the challenge of David when Ahitophel and Absalom rose up against him was not who they, I mean, they were not a challenge. He said, if it was an enemy, the matter is settled. I will just fall on them and kill them. But this one is a son and a counselor, a worthy counselor. That was his challenge. David was a warrior, down to head warrior. But he could not raise his hand against his son and his counselor Ahitophel. But it's the last one that I want us to see. Let's read it again. You see, a fool will say that, okay, I can do the worst thing, it will not separate me. That is not what it meant. It means that you might make mistake, but your mistakes can never separate you from the love of Christ. It means the love of Christ is independent of your actions. But let me tell you, the more you see how much he loves you, your actions align with his word. That's why the Bible says, it's the goodness and the mercies of God that leads men to repentance. Why our generation are unrepentant is because we have taught them that God will judge them when they do wrong. And if God is going to judge them and they know that they deserve the judgment, what is there in trying to be right? I stole 10 naira, you gave me 10 strokes. Why do you want me to be repentant? But if I stole 10 naira, you gave me 50 naira and gave me food and asked me to go. Kai, I will suspect that 10, that 50 naira you gave me and that food. And if I spend the 10 naira and that food, and I realize it's a real food and it's a real ten naira. My heart is broken. But I stole ten naira, you gave me ten lashes. The next time I'll steal more. I know that at worst it's lashes. Yeah. Yeah. Now go back to chapter number five and verse number twelve. So that I'll just do quick work there. Uh, Lord, I thank you for speed this morning. Jesus. I'll be calculating the time that they are delaying. Three minutes is gone already. So on the original time I intend, I'm adding three minutes. Six minutes is gone. Twelve minutes is gone. So I'm adding twelve minutes on my original time. Blame them. Wherefore, as by one man, you know I showed us the one man here, right? The one man here is who? Adam. As by one man sin entered the world, and so death passed upon how many men? All. All, All men are dead. The word dead is not dead, as in cessation of life, it's separation from God. All men without Christ are separated from God. A man that hold it in your hand in Jesus' name, and be sure you hold it correct in Jesus' name. Amen. Or be sure it does not fall in me in Jesus' name. Since I journey to Jesus' name, there will be receiver in the need to have in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, the death here is the consequence and the wages of sin. The wages of sin is death. The death there is not physical death, it's spiritual death. Spiritual death is separation from God. The moment Adam committed high treason, Adam was separated from God. Anytime God was coming, and I, I, I mean, realize something, God was not separated from Adam. It was Adam that was separated because God was still coming to Adam. It was what Adam did that was making Adam to run. Hallelujah. So anything that tells you that God's presence has left you, even in your covenant, is not true. Moreover, in the New Testament, he said, I will never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. So that you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. God does not leave you. The Holy Ghost does not leave you. Cast me not away from you. Take not your Holy Spirit. Is unbeliever song. Was David an unbeliever when he sang it? No, David was in a different covenant from you. Even when David was singing that song, it was just the emotions of David because of what he did. God did not leave David. There are a lot of songs, you don't know the state of the person that sang it. You are here and you are singing it. Even crying. So, and death passed upon all men for all have sinned. The sin here is not that all are fornicators or all are, 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 are adulterers or all used to copy the exam. The sin here is nature. In nature, give me chapter number 8 and verse number uh, 4, NIV version. Chapter 8 and verse 4. NIV, New International Version, chapter number 8 and verse number 4. A nature was battered into man the moment Adam committed high tree. That is why you see in Genesis 1, right, you hear the Bible said that, that God created man in his own image after his likeness. And then in Genesis chapter number 5, you hear this are the generation of Adam in the image of he created he, then male and female. And Adam gave birth after his image, not now after the image of God. What was his image at that point in time? Adam had committed high treason. A nature was battered in his spirit, man. It wasn't death. Because Adam lived 939 years before death was even able to convince him to take him. But Adam was separated. You see the effect of the separation in the life of Cain and Abel. So, now Romans 8, 4. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful word, nature. Sin is a nature, not an act. It's the nature that gives birth to the acts. A lady is a lady by nature. She does not need to pray for anything. According to the time of life, they will be made manifested. A man is a man by nature. Though there are different. Some have beard, some do not. Some have television, some do not. Some men have television, some men do not. Television means flat screen in their house to be watching. My wife is claiming to be naive. Some men have television. Television means that the here in their central part have suffered desertification. Okay, this is heatification. <laughs> it's a nature. You know, if, I mean, when you look at the skeleton of a woman, if you are a physiologist, when you look at the skeleton of a woman and the skeleton of a man, you know this is a female, this is a male. The first place you know is their hip. The second place you know is their here. Yeah. That is why, brothers, you cannot wear these wages they are wearing. Leave them. That is the wages of their life. The wages of... <laughs> Thank you, the wages of fashion. Because I want to say the other one. After all, I'll say it. I'll say it anyhow. Even if I don't say it today, I'll say it. Go on, go on, try wearing it, brothers. You will get tired. You will sit down. That is, if you do not even... But when you see them, they wear it. It's because they have a structure in their bow. See, God is a master planner. He knew that they would come and invent something called wage and you'll be wearing it. You know what God gave you and me? Timbaland. That is why like your brother, you know what Timbaland. I wonder how brother you are. And then if anybody tells you that because you want Timbaland, you go to hell, tell him that even in hell, you want to be wearing your Timbaland. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's nature. Like I gave example on Sunday. Drop toys here. Drop guns and body. Naturally, what will the guys go for? Toy guns. What will the girls go for? Barbie. 
drop sand for them. Guess what the guys will be doing? They'll be building some house with their leg. You know what the ladies will be doing? They'll be cooking with it. Nature. The same way. Anyone that does not have Christ has the sinful nature. Hear me on the audacity of God's word. Anybody that has Christ does not, cannot have the sinful nature. Yes, sir. The challenge is just that they have refused to renew their mind. So some of the some of the old software has not yet been upgraded. That is what the renewing of mind does. But good news. Whether it's upgraded or not, that software cannot crash the system. You know the crashing? That software cannot make you, the believer, to go to hell. Give me first John chapter number uh, 3 and verse number 8. Let me just pieces that and uh, know that I'm done with it and let me start running. That is why you need to walk in the consciousness of who you are. They know not neither do they understand. They die like men. men. The man that is in honor and no way nor shall die, shall perish like a beast. But they that do know their God, they shall be strong. The one know there is have knowledge of who they are in the light of the redemptive finished works of Jesus Christ. If you are struggling, whether if you are in a babe, with a babe in a room, something is going to happen or not. There is nothing wrong. The only challenge is you had been wrongly informed. Is inspiring your actions. Question, is your sister and mother a female? Yes, <laughs> Why are you not thinking that way? Because you were programmed to think that way. That your sister and your mother are local area. The same way, if we were programmed that you can be in a room with a babe and nothing can happen except if you are married. It's not a challenge. Then those of you that go around thinking once a brother and a, and a sister are in a room, something is happening. The problem is you also. Unto the pure, not some, all things are pure. That means if you are the one in that room, something will happen. That is actually so you think that everybody is like you. Can we read it together? One, two, go. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For the sin purpose, sin nature. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. What is the works of the devil? Sin nature. Now, look at verse 9 so that you know that he's talking about the sin nature. Verse 9. One, two, go. Can we read it? Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Why? For God's seed, rather God's nature, remained in him. He cannot. He cannot have two nature. You cannot. You know the way First Peter 123 put it? He said, the incorruptible seed of the word of God remained in you, which, 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 which abided forever. You're not a sinner. That is why you should stop confessing sins, actions. I cannot be saying every lipstick, I take authority over every lipstick, every lipstick shall not cause me cancer, every lipstick shall not cause me, every eyelashes shall not cause me blindness. I have nothing to do with eyelashes, I have nothing to do with lipstick. If there is any stick on my lips, it's when I'm kissing my wife. That's when the lip stick. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Apart from that, no lipstick, I don't even put first lip. It has nothing to do with me. But for the ladies, you hear lectures, it's all these things you put in your mouth that causes these, that deposit in that, that. As me, I'm hearing, I know it has nothing to do with me. But when you start talking to guys and you start talking prostrate, prostrate, this thing cause prostrate, I have to listen. What does prostrate have to do with ladies? Nothing. Make sure, hear me. For the believer, you have nothing to do with sin. You have passed the land called sin. You are not a sinner and you cannot be. Pastor, 
I know me better than you. No, you don't know you. You think you know you. Glory to God. Say, I cannot sin. Say, sin is a nature. And that nature is no longer me. You say, eh, but the Bible says, whosoever is born of God. I don't know if I'm born of God or if I'm born of kind, kind. You are born of God. Are you born again? Yes, Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Give me five one. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Yes, then you are born again. Give me five one quickly. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Give me verse 18. Brother, you are born of God. You might have challenges, but not even the worst thing listed in the Bible shall be able to separate you. It's a nature. It's a nature. The reason why we have a lot of challenges is because we have been taught wrong. That's why we're teaching you right. We're teaching you right. Why wasn't there challenges in the church in Ephesus? Paul spent three and a half years, night and day, teaching them. Why was there a challenge in the church in Corinth? Paul would always pray that he should be permitted to come to them. They never had a feel of him. Yet with the church of Corinth, Paul would rebuke them. And then Paul would now turn and say, but you are sanctified. You are glorified. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Tell people who they are. They will walk in the light of who they are. Tell a Yarobo he's a Yarobo. How do you expect him to behave? Yeah. Tell a conductor he's a conductor. How do you expect him to behave? He'll be conducting things, including your phone. <laughs> we know that whosoever is born of God, sin it not, Shabbatadaya. But he that is born of God, keep at himself. He said, yes, you see, but the Bible says you have to keep yourself. Yes, that is a B responsibility. The first keeping is not mine. Give me Jude verse 23, verse 24. God is responsible for your life. That is why God will not allow anything. That is why you are constantly under the fountain of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's read it one to go. Now unto him. Good God. Now unto God that is able to keep me from falling. Shadabaya. Where will you, where will you be when the trumpet, when the trumpet sound? Where will you, where? You know I have a problem with those things. Let me ask you. Who amongst us here in boarding school? When is your best time in boarding school? Eh? One, visiting day. Normal every day. Which one is your best time? Dining time. Why is dining time your best time? If you schooled like my school, government-owned public school, there is this trailer hop that they tied on a tree. They kept one big iron on it. Change of um, subject is one small bed. <laughs> We are waiting for the next teacher. But when it is dining time, you hear, bam, brother. It, no matter the lectures and unhappy you are, suddenly some unconscious joy is made manifested. Why? There is hope that you are going to the dining hall. Then you want to tell me that after Jesus Christ died, then the trumpet sounding should be a thing that should scare me, not excite me. Then the death of Jesus is not correct. The, the trumpet sounding should be something we are looking up to. A good part, the Bible says that day will not take you on a rest. Where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet, I'll be happy, so much happy, that he will come and go with me. Have you ever seen people that are waiting for somebody to come and carry them to travel? I mean, the journey you want to go. Then the person appears and is like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. Do you know, till tomorrow, some of us, as big as we are, 
when some people come, particularly ladies, when some people come to move with you, you don't know where you are. Isela, Isela, he is here, he is here. Oh, I'm coming. No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. Ash, Inka. Let's go. Do you think that those people that came to pick you are better than Jesus? Oh. When the trumpet sound, I know exactly where I will be. I know exactly where you will be. Exactly. exactly. Eh? But the Bible says that two will be granted. Did you hear it say two? I'm not among the people that will be granted. The Bible did not put people that are blending. That's why you are using blender. The people granting are all those people that are still in the kitchen. Your flight should be first flight. Okay. Brother, first flight, second flight, or third flight. Most importantly, let there be a flight. I'd rather be a doorkeeper, which is not possible, in the house of my God, in the old covenant. How can a son be a doorkeeper? How? Even the prodigal son, the father did not bring him to the door, he brought him inside the house. Please go back to Romans 5. God is able to keep us. Hallelujah. You know what Romans said? He said that Christ will sanctify you by the washing of water by the word and present you before himself blameless. He's the one that does it. Good news, he has done it. It is death, burial, and resurrection. Fear not! God has not given unto you the spirit of fear. It's religion. I said I was talking with one of the sisters in church. She said one day she went to church. That somebody came that he went to the mountain and the Lord revealed to him that all the sisters with attachment are going to go to hell. She was trying to contend that were all sisters that are wearing women on her door so fast. All the sisters that are wearing sleeveless are going to hell. She was trying to contain that one. All this uh, lipstick and this thing is from the pit of hell. She said that time she decided and walked to the dad, received the khaki, and continued her service in the car. Brother, sister, it's not that which goes into a man that defiles him, but that which comes out of a man. In the new covenant, after Jesus Christ's resurrection, nothing can defile you. You are made sanctified. The word sanctified means you are set apart. If something could, then it means Jesus' work is not a finished work. Hey, but what if I sin? The Bible says we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. Not for our sins only, but for the sins of the world. And his blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Anything that comes on your righteousness, something, remove it. Oh my God. Take me back to Romans 2. Wherefore has my one man seen dead rain? Verse 13 now. And dead and, and all have sinned. For until the law, emphasis until the law, before the law came, sin was in the world, but sin, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. You see, this is why people don't understand why people like Abraham even had a bosom called paradise where everybody was. Because you felt that Abraham was lying and had a hagar and was busy doing things. There was no law. So on what basis could you judge him? Until I say, thou shalt not drink my juice. The juice is a right. Until there is a thou shalt not, there is no law. And before Abraham, I mean, before the law came, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed. Note credited to people's account but everybody was born with the sin nature that is why the main crux of the redemption is to change the nature or the main crux of redemption is the nature change now hear me and hear me real good 
People had always said, okay, you mean that we're going to live without the Lord, then how are we going to Let me tell you the first thing, the Lord was never given to solve the sin problem. The Lord was actually given to show men how sinful they were. Yeah. Number two, the Lord brought a revival of sin. Let's give it a try. Go to chapter number seven. Go to chapter number seven of the book of Romans, right? And uh, project for me uh, verse number nine, chapter seven and verse number nine. Don't think that the Lord, hey, you see, the Bible, in our, in our, in our, in our, in our, in our, they say, brothers should not come sisters. <laughs> the Zunubi. Who is the Zunubi? Who is the Zunubi? Pastor Chimasu, pastor in Zunubi. Chunda Puna de Aranzamani as the Ecclesian. You know they, they, they do what they say Puna was at the Zunubi is. Of. If you want to touch them, ask them what did Paul mean when he said, Read one another with your holy kiss. But don't go there and say, Pastor, say we should go around kissing each other with your holy kiss. You will have more than enough problem that you cannot solve. <laughs> I used to say it this way in those days when I was still in between. I say, How holy is your kiss? If you are sure it's holy, then do it. <laughs> so when you are going to do it, analyze it, put it on a scale. Is it a holy one or an unholy one? It's as if this is unholy. What is the basis upon which you are scaling it? <laughs> well, sir, you'll be so amazed that the answer to every foolishness is the Bible. For I was alive without the law once. Then what happened? But when the commandment came, sin died. Revived. Caught me anywhere. I've been in this thing for a while. 24 years, even if I'm a fool, I should learn some things. You want to see the revival of sin? Start giving people boundaries. Here, yeah. we don't want sin in the camp. So, pronouns will stay on the left side and sisters on the right side. There is still sin in the camp. Since it is brothers and sisters, the only thing is that sin is in the left, sin is in the right. <laughs> if we catch you wearing trousers, we will suspend you from church. I thought you would receive the trouser. So that I will sue you. Because there is freedom of expression in our constitution. That's what another thing the church does not even know that we have infringed into our constitution. But let me tell you, if trouser will make anybody to go to hell, farming will make more people to go to hell. Yes, sir. Because in farming, you are also breaking the law by planting so many things on one land. If farming will make more people will go to hell, everybody here, if the trumpet sound, you are not going to heaven because your clothes are diverse. Cotton, wool, silk, all manner of things. We spend years on unimportant things and build more wicked sinners. <laughs> Can I tell you an honest thing? Drinking will not take anybody to hell. It will only destroy your body and your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we honor God in not drinking alcohol. This same alcohol is the legal drink in nations like Germany. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This same kind, kind that you drink, it keeps you warm. It's a legal drink, legal drink, legal drink in some countries and states yes, because of how old their places are. Yes, sir. If they don't drink it, their liver will fail. <laughs> it's dead. I'm suspecting you will come and check your house. <laughs> well, hear me. As a believer in Christ, this is the reason why you do not take anything alcohol. 
The Bible said that when a king drinks strong drink, he will pervert justice. And in Christ, you are now kings. It's not about heaven. It's so that you will not pervert justice. Number two, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And in honoring God, you preserve your body. Even resting is another way you have to preserve your body. Some of you are hustling. And you are complaining about people that are drinking. You are a more sinner. In coach. I hear him. So we preserve our body. We honor God. He said, I beseech you that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Set apart. Set apart there means you do not do things that will affect it. It's not about heaven. You know, a lot of times people say, hey, every disobedient child shall go to hell. No, master. Disobedience has nothing to do with hell. It has something to do with you enjoying heaven on earth. He said, if ye are willing and are obedient, you will eat the good of the land. It has nothing to do with heaven. As far as heaven is concerned, it's one thing. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes! That makes you heaven bound. Please, uh, I was alive and the Lord came and I died. And I died. What killed me? The Lord! The Lord. Yeah. Please give me 54 of First Corinthians. 54 and uh, verse, uh, let me, let me check it. 54 and from verse number 55. First Corinthians 54 from verse number 55. The Lord, one day I'll take a time and do uh, First Corinthians 15, verse 54. You should know where I'm talking. See, if you're on that media stand and some scriptures, even if I call them wrongly, you should know where I meant. If you project the wrong one, this problem after church will solve it. The 54, from verse 56, I said. Okay, from verse 55. Okay, just go to 56. Leave it. Just go to 56. 56. The sting of death is sin and distraint of sin is what? It means if you want to see super men, sinners, give more laws. <laughs> no, that's actually what it meant. Give me Romans 8 and verse number 3 and 4. Say I'm free from the law. Before Adam, sin was in the world, but sin was not, before law, but sin was not imputed. It means nobody was called a sinner. Good news. That is why all those patri that existed before then, yeah. they are there. Yeah. Yeah. Aha. Better news. That is why we patri that are here will go there. <laughs> hey! One day I said to myself, I said, there is no assurance of salvation. There is no need of trying. If it is on the last day that we will know, why are we trying? But this is the confidence. There is an assurance that we have even right now. The Bible says, for as he is, so are we. And because as he is, there is no fear on the day of judgment. That's actually the way first John put it. Please. For what the Lord could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Listen. Why? That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Uh, 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 Papa, come. Once you were a student in Amadou Bello University, undergraduate, Kapasa, you are dancing <laughs> like mad, my dad, but you to do that in Jesus. And they are not dancing unto the Lord. Dancing unto They are dancing unto degree. And they can coach. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Some of them don't even used to come to church on Sunday. Once they are in 300 levels. Because even on Sunday they have lectures in Tapasa. Papa, do you have your certificate? Whether it's the statement of result or the real original. Do you have it? What was written on it? He does not even know. <laughs> Most importantly, he has it. Go and check. Having 
fulfill the requirement for the award of blah 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 he is therefore awarded the moment you fulfilled it you are awarded can you go back now to be an undergraduate student in tapasa has already cried. You see some of you that are still having sleepless now, all these 100 levels that are not in church, they are not, they will call them after church. Ask them, they could not even read though. So I will not go to church, I will, they can't even read. <laughs> the moment there is a fulfillment of the requirement, you don't have to go through the same process again. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me, as far as the law is concerned, the purpose for it had already been fulfilled. We now saw that we are sinners and we sought out for God's grace. We are no longer under the law. Are you under Amadou Bello University undergraduate? Now this is, thank you sir, please sit down. This is the one that people use against. They said, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, brother. You know, the flesh can lead you to hell. Even Paul said, it's better you marry than you born. Mm. The moment you see a girl, your body is doing you, shuku, 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 shuku. and you start thinking whether God truly loves you. Because you are not the one that put this thing in your body that is doing you shuku, 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 shuku. It's natural that when a guy sees a lady that yen her so, there will be some chemical reaction. The challenge is not the chemical reaction, it's what you do with the chemical reaction. The chemical reaction are your natural response as a created being. Hear me. I hear me very well. The Bible, give me Galatians 5.24. Oh, Galatians 5.24, let me read it for you. That's why I told you that you should be coming. All these things are not trusted. You must have a trusted, printed Bible, no matter how old. Galatians 5.24, he said, And they that are Christ had crucified the flesh with its lust and affection thereof. Are you Christ? Do you belong to Christ? You have crucified the flesh. So who walk not after the flesh is already dealt with one. Number two. Let's read verse nine. I wish we had it projected. I wish. But let's read verse nine of Romans eight. Everybody, if you have it in your phone, I'm going to give us a little time to open it. Romans eight and verse number nine. If you have your Bible in your phone, please stop moving with Bibles in phone. Get printed Bibles. You know the reason? One day your phone can fail you. He can never, never fail. He can never, never fail. He can never, never fail. Printed Bibles, no, they fail. The worst is that you forget it in the bus. <laughs> and the bus driver does not need it. They will look for you. That's why you should write your phone number. If missing, call. Romans 8 said, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. That's Romans 8 and verse 9. But you are not. So, the who walk not after the flesh is not talking about the believer in Christ. You can no longer walk after the dictates. He that is born of God does not commit sin. Glory to God. Are you sure it's not from the power source? Is it booting? Praise God. Okay, now let me let me just do from my Bible. So, having said that, verse verse verse, uh, verse fourteen. Nevertheless, they bring from Adam even unto Moses, even over those that do not have uh, the similitude of Adam's transgression, but not as the offense. So also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be made dead, much more the grace of God and the free gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abounded unto many. Offense one, free gift many. Verse 17. No. And not as it was, verse 16, by one that sin, so is the gift. 
For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Verse 17 and verse 18. Let's read verse 17 together if you are there. For if by one man's offense then reign, much more, they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Number one thing I want you to hold in your heart now is that righteousness is a gift. Say righteousness is a gift. Right, I want to give a gift. Who wants it? Tell me, talk about come. You bless me today. Kai, you see. I was, I just put my hand. I didn't intend to bring out 20 naira. Okay, let me put it. Did you hear what she says? I put your hand again. This baby. I should put my hand again. If I put my hand and it did not come out with anything, that means you will not get this one. Jemita <laughs> <laughs> what did she do to receive it? Why did she take it? Hear me. Let me digress. The Holy Ghost is a gift. You don't need to do anything to receive it. Don't even pray. A lot of time people say, eh, Father, I ask, I say, no, stop it. He said, why? I say, it's a gift, just receive it. How do you receive it? He said, Holy Ghost, I receive you. She cannot. The moment you receive him, he comes upon you. What do you do? Open your mouth and begin to speak in tongues. It's an act of faith. Number two, when I gave the mitokwe, did the mitokwe needed to just go and get much more holy and much more righteous? She did not even think about it. She just received it. Sir, anything that is a gift is a gift. What did she do? Did you even know you were going to receive 15 naira today? Next time it will be 100 dollars in Jesus' name. Yeah. That means it should be in faith for me to have like a thousand dollars. If I have a thousand dollars, giving it a hundred dollars is not a challenge. But if it's for a hundred dollars, there is a challenge. That's why God wants you to have more so that giving will not be a challenge. Hear me? Righteousness is a gift. It's not what you do. It's a gift you receive. She didn't work for this. She did not. While we were yet seen as Christ died, why did he die? According to the scriptures for our sin. After he died, he that knew no sin was made sin. Why? That we might be made the righteousness of God. Hear me? Now we have the abundance, number one, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And that abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness help us to do primarily one thing in this life. He said to reign. A lot of times they told us that it's when we get to heaven that we're going to reign. Thank you, you're blessed of God. They say it's when we get to heaven that we're going to reign. No man, it's here on earth. The kingdoms of this earth shall become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. And that kingdom of our God and of his Christ he had given to us that we might reign on this earth. What does it mean to reign? One word is to subjugate. Another is to dominate. Another is to put on that. It means every situation and circumstances of life now that you are in Christ, you can reign over it. You can subjugate it. Praise God forevermore. You can have dominion. You're not the one that situation and circumstances are ruling and dominating. No man. The, the reason for this life is not for you to be a coward. It's not for you to be beggarly. That's why the Bible said the righteous is as bold as a lion. I wonder how righteous men even walk with their head down. <laughs> See, let me tell you one thing righteousness does. Righteousness brings your leg sharp yeah. into fire. Did you hear that? Righteousness brings your If you are a sister, it gives you a spring and then it gives you a wedge so that when you are walking, whether you are known or not, you can never pass unnoticed in this life. Whether you are rich or poor, and you can never even be poor the moment you are born again. 
for a brother, it gives you a broad chest whether you are lifting the weight. I mean spiritually. That's why some of us are even doing it physically. Situations are like, I don't know what the nineteen is going to be. We don't know what we're going to be in the country. It has nothing to do with you. No matter what happens, all things are working together for your good. Yeah, it's our responsibility to speak word over our nation. But if our nation refuses to go the way we want it, we are not at disadvantage. With God on our side like this, how can we ever be disadvantaged? It's called righteousness. It's a gift. Giving you the right of standing in the presence of God without a sense of guilt, timidity, or inferiority. That's why the New Testament said, as he is, so are we. Did they tell you that Jesus did not have need? He did. There were unpaid bills. He wasn't moving elder skeleton like skeleton. He asked Peter, what do you do? He said, I catch fish. He said, go and catch fish. I will supernaturally make the fish to go and swallow the money that is under the sea. Then it will come up, then you will catch it, and the money will be enough to pay. When they needed food, they need they have need of food. Say so one small boy, the mother will give him food, we will multiply it. You think that Jesus was not having one challenge? One day, Peter's mother that used to cook was down. He has to raise her. And the Bible said she ministered to them. So don't think that you are the only one that is going through challenge. But let me tell you the reason why you are going through challenge. You are going through challenges because you have an upper hand over it. And until you see that you have an upper hand, challenges of life will always have upper hand over you. Ten carryovers you are crying. For what? I had 31 carryovers. 31. And I didn't cry. I stood at the notice board and I laughed. I said, notice board, I refuse to notice you. I am the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. Ah, the testimony of the Lord is my meditation. I know better than my teachers. This is not who I am. I told somebody was there. I said, yes, look at my number, 1031. Check me out next semester, see what is going to happen. Next semester, I cleared their doubt. Who collect the things that be not as though they were? When I speak, there's something happens spiritually. See, don't be going to say, Why me? Why me, Lord? Why me? Why me, Lord? Why me? Why me, Lord? Why me? If not, you tell me who then? If not you. If not you, tell me who then? Well, you know what the Bible said? It said there are no trials, temptation, or persecution that comes your way. That is not common. It means every other person has his own. It's common. Every other see that as our face is different, our challenge is different. So. <laughs> the one you think is a challenge when you see somebody, you know that your own is not a challenge. Yet he said, God is able with the temptation, not without the temptation, with to make a way of escape. The challenge is you are just preoccupied with the temptation, you are not seeing the way of escape. But there is always an escape. Always! No money. Uh, let me say this. I was in Kano. I went for a Christian program. We were lodged in a Christian hotel. I'm used to me and Pastor Monday and any other person traveling, we leave our money in the box. I was in the hotel, I came back. See that? I searched for my money. It's a Christian. Man of God, is that I center Christian place? I now know the place. That was where we lodge. I searched all over, I couldn't find the money. And I did like Joseph. Joseph, being a righteous man, did not want to make a public spectacle of Mary. I didn't tell anybody. I started thinking where to get money. Is it no strange? Man of God, have you ever sent your tithe around that 11 p.m. in the night? Have you ever? Did I call you, sir, that your tithe was the saving almighty? As at that time, I was awake, my wife was awake because I was to come back the next day. I did not have money. I told one thing, wherever he's going to get money, because I had a lot of money at home, in the bag again at home. So when I came back, 
I moved the money from the bag. No money in the bag again. Around 11.35, I was there standing. I was like, my needs are met, my bills are paid supernaturally. My wife was like, she's going to transfer money, blah, 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 blah. Why she was about to transfer money? Bam! A lot entered. I called her and said, relax, babe. A lot don't enter. 11.35. Pastor Monday had never sent money that late. I didn't call him. I didn't tell anybody apart from my wife and one friend. It was even my wife that says those people that come to clean the room that must have done that. I say, wow, that is serious. Because I literally left that box open. And all I needed is transport to come back to Zaria. And I don't travel with the ATM. The moment they send the money, Send 2,000 naira to, to one faith's account. The next, I told him that night, withdraw it first thing in the morning and appear. He withdrew it and appear. I was moving as though nothing happened. Can I tell you, if I started all my enemies, the people that stole, the Bible said that the man that put his trust in man, when good come, even though you are trusting man, good will still be coming. God is faithful. The challenge is that you will not see it because your eyes is on man somewhere else. I didn't put that one minute. All like, in fact, at a point in time, I said, if that is the case, I will just go to the park, charter a car. When we come, if we just arrive, I'll say, give this guy his cocaine and pep money. When we come to Zaria, I will give him the money for chartering the whole car. And that was the point that I was. Because the money is here at home. The money at home, I didn't touch. The people I was thinking I was going to, no, 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 no. One person is going to call his brother. There is no temptation <laughs> that comes your way that is not common. How be it? God shall wait, not wait out. Make you hear me. God have designed that we reign. We are not third class people. Let them scheme and strategize in this country. We will always come out on top. Hallelujah. Always. Hallelujah. Yet we too we have decided we'll start scheming and strategizing in Christ. Yeah. The moment you enter an office, even if you don't like the person's face, if his name is John, Noel, Gabriel, Jake's, just be putting them there. Whether they have the result or not, whether they are qualified or not, whether they are from your village or not, put them there in the offices. Learn and be wise. Don't say, you're saying, we, we don't want to miss heaven, so we must keep to the present. They say it's 2-2. Two, two. And what you have here is a certificate of attendance, so I will not break my conscience. Strapped up with your conscience. Your conscience was put there by religion. If there is an office and if you can put somebody with a pass, put him and give him pass to go and update his pass. Did you hear that? Yes. Give him school leave to go and update and be paying him or her. One, if they come and they remove me from the office, at least you have done your part. You have put a righteous man over there. One, if they are witches from the village, it's because you left them hungry in the village. That is why they become witches. Bring them to the city and give them job. What do witches do? They eat meat. Allah, buy them meat. Constant supply of meat. Buy cows. Take it to your village and see if the witches in your village will not stop witchcraft business. <laughs> it's hunger. No, no, no bush meat. No meat. No money to buy meat in the market. No nothing. That's why they have started eating human beings. Even in the city, there are people that are cannibals. It's brokenness. I'm born to reign in this life. Please let me read verse 18 and 19 and I'm done for today. Verse 18. I'm born to reign. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all unto condemnation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift of what? Righteousness came upon all men unto justification of life. The word justification is righteousness. Therefore being made righteous, therefore being justified by faith, therefore being made righteous. Now, 
Give us the message translation here and see what it meant. Message. He said, uh, message. Here, here, here it is in a nutshell. Just as one person did wrong and got us all into this trouble with sin and death. Shadabaya. Glory to God. Another person did it right and got us out of it. But more than just getting us out of the trouble, he got us into life. That is why the first man, Adam, was a quickening soul. I mean, was, was a living soul. But the last Adam is a quickening, a life giving. That is what we are brought into. We do not just have life, we can give life. Believe you me, I believe strongly that if somebody is about to die and they have 10 believers come to live around him, even if they are not praying, is a strong persuasion. Even if they are not praying, there is a presence they carry that will deal with the dead that is trying to take this dead man away. There is a sphere of contact that this life you carry is able to affect. How much more you are there, you are muttering in tongues. You know what you're doing? You're causing and effecting changes. A lot of times people just say, in the name of Jesus! No, no, no. There are times you need to tarry in God's presence. Hallelujah. Just stay there and bring down the anointing. This anointing is this life that you carry. Do you know that you put water on pot one minute, you remove it? Is it boiling? No. Are you going to feel the heat? No. Put water on pot and leave it. Gas and leave it for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Even inside the kitchen, the moment you enter, you feel the heat of the steam. A lot of us are too much in a haze. Us is us is all Christians. Don't spend time doing anything. Not even praying for a loved one. Put water on the pot. Bam, you remove it. So some of those, you, that, 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 is, that is why some people have died. Yeah. Have you ever put Bobo on fire? You even need a pressure pot. Some situation and circumstance need a pressure believer. You need to bring out some holy pressures. This life that is in issue. Give me the next verse so that I round up. Thank you, Lord. See, I met somebody that I'm better off. The person kept saying, let me say this last thing. The next one hour, let me say this last thing. The next one hour, let me say this last thing. I said, Father, if this is the only thing I learned here, I'm very grateful. I'm better off than this person. One man said no to God and put many people in the wrong. Shagabaya. One man said yes to God and put many in the right. Where are we? Is that the last verse? Say, I'm in the right with God. What did you do to, to, to be put right? One thing, Jesus Christ said yes. Okay. All that passing law against sin did was produce more lawbreakers. But sin did and doesn't have a chance in competition with the aggressive forgiveness we call grace. It means you are forgiving the person. The person is not ready to accept it, but <laughs> it is still following you. I mean, like guys, let me tell you a secret, guys. Some of you needed to be aggressive with some sisters. She says no, and you give up. Lie, lie. She wants to know if you truly meant what you are saying. She says, no, tomorrow change your trouser, change your coat, change your color, spray. See, if you don't have perfume, go to push. There are grasses that smell. Rub it in your body. Come back. She says, no, go back again. Come to my son, Tabel. He will teach you how to do perfume with flowers. You go, she says, no. Be aggressive in sin. Life, eh? See, the kingdom of God suffered violence yes, and is the violence that does were take it by force. I do not take no for an answer. Say, what do you mean? I mean, sister, I'm coming back again. again. <laughs> One year, maybe you were very broke. Go and get a job. 
you are driving my type of former car. Go and get a better car. Come back again. The sister, I'm back again. You know, I told you I will be back. <laughs> I'm here. I'll be back. That is how aggressive this kind of God's forgiveness is. When it is sin versus grace, grace wins and down. Are you in sin or in grace? That is why you have won hands down. And you will keep winning hands down. And forever, your own part is that you are always having, dealing with things hands down. If you doubt it, go and ask a vendor, Hollywood. He came, they asked him, how did you win? He said, I just came and I was praying in tongues and I won. Change the record. Hands down. You, you know, to win somebody hands down means you so dealt with it that he cannot even muster muscles to want to fight you kid hands down. <laughs> He's gone. Hey! Thank you, Lord. I have the gift of righteousness and I'm in grace. I'm in God's grace. I'm in Jesus Christ. Grace is a person, not a message. And Jesus is that person. And if any man be in Christ, I am in Christ. I'm always winning. That's why the Bible said, even God that causes us to triumph daily, daily in Christ. Hands down. See, the academic challenges, don't worry, hands down, hands down. Amen. Walked out on you, she walked out on you. Don't worry, brother. Don't worry, sister. If you like the person and your pastor, change your clothes. If then you were wearing baggy, now start wearing slim pencil trouser. Maybe it's your baggy that made her to not see light. Some of you, you go to ask a sister out with coat. If you have the sister, I'll tell you no. If you don't have, if you don't have suit, meet Jake's, he can borrow you one. Suit up, when you are done, return the borrowed property. Two, three years into the relationship, tell her sister that first day's suit was borrowed. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I have the gift of righteousness. I reign in this life by one. I reign in this life by one. I am the reigning man. That is why you come to the office. You've not done anything. They are afraid. They have seen who you are spiritually. Yes, sir. You enter. You, you enter into a neighborhood. I mean, from where you are coming, they were yapping. But you enter into the neighborhood. You see everybody looking you up and down. They are already afraid. They know that they are living. They are. They are giving up. So the, the landlord have arrived. Ladies cannot have that feeling. See her leg. Now the leg. Now they pain them. See, I'm like hockey stick. You'll be there, the hockey stick will deal with all the guys in the neighborhood. All attention will be on the hockey stick. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Say, I have the gift of righteousness. I reign. I reign in this life by one, even Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your body.